As a homeless person, you live dime to dime, quarter to quarter. This problem has become so acute, there's no one solution to the crisis. I never, ever saw myself being homeless, never. I did not anticipate this at all. San Francisco has created an environment where drug addiction and homelessness go hand in hand. Well, San Francisco's really got a progressive kind of political feel to it today. Someone who's called conservative in city government or moderate would be practically a hippie in Iowa. It's, it's, it's definitely the left coast. San Francisco is the second most densely populated US city. It's famous for being the birthplace of the counterculture movement, a mecca for LGBTQI plus people, and home to some of the world's tech giants in nearby Silicon Valley. Despite the city's significant wealth, it's also well known for having a highly visible homeless population. It has the most visible problem of homelessness in America, because it's right downtown where all the tourists are hanging. We don't have more homeless people than other cities, but we have the most visible one. I don't know if we want to do it as a sidebar on this 16-year-old, or you want to do it as a standalone. Kevin Fagan is a reporter at the Not San Francisco sure. Chronicle. He's been covering homelessness in the city for more than two decades. There was the explosion of homelessness in the 80s when we, as a country, decimated most of our social support programs. So poor people suddenly wound up homeless and it became a crisis and we've been Band-Aid fixing it ever since. In the last 10 years, you know, the street just got flooded with people. It's not to know where I want to be. You know, no. I know I have an addiction, okay? It's just to survive out here, you know? It's just to cope with this. In my heart, you know, I know if I'm indoors, gainfully employed, I'll leave all this behind. It is estimated that year-round there are more than 20,000 homeless people in San Francisco, sleeping in tents and vehicles all over the city every night. Many feel the city's liberal attitude has attracted homeless people from all over the United States. About 70% of these homeless folks you see here were living in San Francisco at the time they became homeless. So you got about 30% coming in from outside. Some people say it's more, you know, it's, it's tough to tell. It does have a reputation of being kinder than other cities. You're not gonna get your, you know, teeth kicked in by the police. That just really doesn't happen here. It's more of a, it, it's a kinder approach. Being homeless in San Francisco, it's better than anywhere else I've been homeless. Like I got free housing out of it. And then I decided if I'm gonna be a junkie, we might as well do it in San Francisco. Because it's, there's a lot more dope out here for free and cheaper. But not all San Franciscans are happy about the way their city handles homelessness. Anything that they're doing right now, in my opinion, is an epic fail. All of it. None of it works. I've never seen any exits out of homelessness. I've never seen anybody truly assisted. The only thing that I've seen is people end up in the morgue. That's it. That is the only out. Adam Mesnick runs a sandwich shop in downtown San Francisco. He's been living yeah, yeah. here for 20 years and says the problem has gotten noticeably worse. Did you have a sticker up here? Yeah, right here. And they took, well, they stole my register. No way. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, they broke in. It's changed dramatically. Now, in my neighborhood, many, if not all, of the people living on the streets are addicted to drugs. This is not a issue of lack of housing or really a poverty issue at all. These are young kids from all over the country and world that have landed here basically to do drugs. Anybody have Narcan? Nobody has fucking Narcan? Fed up with the confronting scenes he saw in his neighborhood, Adam took to Twitter to share videos he takes on his daily walk to work. In the feed, there's dreadful photos and dreadful images. It's tents, it's encampments, it's bodies. It's the combat zone that I live in. It wears on you for sure. There's no question about it. It's changed me, it's changed my outlook on a lot of things, but it's painful to watch people in pain. I mean, it looks like people are suffering. I don't think that anybody in San Francisco 
has been anything other than ultra compassionate to that population. And maybe that population needs a little bit more than compassion. Maybe there needs to be some tough love. It's a real struggle and it's a real conundrum of, of how to take care of our poorer people in America because the, the system is really set up to create an underclass. About 30% of Americans are living either right about poverty level or below. And when you have that kind of level of poverty, you're going to have homelessness. The US government estimates the number of homeless people in the country is a little under 600,000, around 40% of which are unsheltered. That's just under 0.07% of the population. It's almost double the number in Australia. Unlike places like Australia or Britain, we don't have national health. So if you have terrible health problems, you can wind up out in the street. We don't have council housing to the extent that we should. The minimum wage is in the basement, a little over $7 an hour in America, which is preposterous. Some people loathe homeless people. Some people feel their hearts breaking for them. They just want the problem solved. And solving the homelessness problem in San Francisco is high on the agenda for the city's new mayor. In a dramatic change from the liberal attitudes that have guided the city for decades, Mayor London Breed is taking a so-called tough love approach. The reign of criminals who are destroying our city, it is time for it to come to an end. And it comes to an end when we take the steps to be more aggressive with law enforcement, more aggressive with the changes in our policies, and less tolerant of all the bullshit that has destroyed our city. Aside from cracking down on crime, a new local tax on large corporations, mainly big tech companies, will double San Francisco's annual budget for homelessness services to around half a billion dollars a year. I was homeless for a little over 15 years. Being homeless is like being lost. You're out there day to day. Everyone's against you. You don't know where you're gonna live. You don't know where you're gonna sleep at night. It's real tough. You have to have a real strong mindset in order to be out there in these streets. Joe is one local who's benefited from the city's programs, getting off drugs, off the streets, and into stable housing. It's kind of like an embarrassment. I wanted to be able to have my kids come see me and not be like, oh my God, you gotta, gotta come see me in a tent. They can't pay rent. That's the bottom line. People want to blame, you know, mental health. They want to blame people being on drugs as being the issue. I think that that is a symptom of being homeless. The bottom line is people cannot pay rent. Abode is one of many organizations in San Francisco tackling homelessness. They say the high cost of housing is a big part of the problem. There's one gentleman you found a unit for, he's been hard to place. If folks are in a permanent supportive housing, they're paying 30% of their income towards housing and utilities. And then we are providing the rest of the funding to the landlord to be able to pay for that apartment at full market rent. We have over 90% success rate of people remaining in housing and exiting to a permanent housing situation when they leave our program. So the program is highly successful. I make $1,000, $10 a month. The rent here fully is a little over $2,100. And this is just a studio. So no, I would never be able to make it without the help of a boat. Without them, I would probably have died on the street. We have done so much housing in the last 18 to 24 months, but it's still not outpacing the rate of people coming into homelessness every single day. One experimental program is really pushing the boundaries and asking ordinary people just how far they would go to help out someone in need. A host home program is one where someone who has extra room in their home opens it up for a temporary stay for someone who doesn't have a place to stay. Yeah, like in the chair. 
in the chair. Okay. I am a teacher, and in addition to doing my work in the classroom, I also run an organization called Safe Time. We've had six new applications for hosts in the last few weeks. What we're hoping is that we can create a place where people can kind of get back on their feet, save some money, reset themselves to find a, a more permanent housing, and then they'll never have to end up unhoused. Christy and her husband have hosted many homeless people over the last few years. For the last five years, we've usually had someone living with us. We've had mostly single individuals, but we had a family of five stay with us for um, several months, and they ultimately were able to buy a house, and they moved out of this room and into their own home. Having an unhoused person in your home is no different from having any roommate, because being low income is not a criminal act. The security measures that we go through with the background checks and the reference checks, you know, those certainly like make sure that people are who they say they are and that they are making positive decisions for their lives. I think that it's such a big problem that we need to address it on all fronts. So government needs to do more and individuals, members of the community need to do more for each other. In truth, only time will tell if San Francisco's new mix of tough love and big bucks will fix the city's homelessness problem. But for longtime San Franciscan Kevin Fagan, he's hoping this time it's different. The next few years is going to be interesting. We've suddenly got a lot of money in this state and this city to deal with the problem. Well, will we? Will we change policy to be fairer about our wages and our housing and our health care? I don't know. Over the decades, I have seen these surges and the problem continues. I am cynical, but I'm also always hopeful.